When I examine that old rugged cross, the mighty God it's back. It reaches down to the lowest of hell, to heaven's golden strand. I stand amazed. I stand amazed of this love that Save me and bought me. I stand amazed when I imagine in glory that day when all of heaven stood still. As God incarnate, the Savior of man, died upon Calvary's tree. Oh, I stand amazed. sought me, saved me, and bought me. I stand amazed of His love that has sought me, saved me, and bought me. Have your Bibles turned to Exodus chapter 20 this morning. Exodus chapter 20. Appreciate all of you being here. A lot of uh, folks are with their children at other churches, and I'm glad that some people brought their children here. Amen. Good to see Brother Nathan. I asked him when the big day was, and he said six days, and she said five days, and I believe it's probably five and a half, but uh, appreciate them. They're having a big wedding soon, and excited about that, amen? It's good to see all of you children come back home. I was looking through pictures of Baby Dedication Day, Baby Dedication Day. We used to do that on Mother's Day, ran out of time, didn't have enough time to preach, so we do it the uh, always the Sunday before Thanksgiving, and we have Baby Dedication Day, but I... I was looking at this particular picture, and here was Alicia Hanks on one end, baby, uh, dedicating one of her children to the Lord, and then there was uh, Alicia Souther on the other end, with little Tyler, now he's six foot seven, and Chase, he's about six foot five, and both those little, little, little men were dedicated to the Lord by their mother. Their mother went home prematurely, and my uh, daughter... And uh, son-in-law adopted them and took them to South Africa. And pray for the Elrods, by the way, please. I saw her yesterday over at Vision. And uh, I thought about what a blessing it is to see this one lady that dedicated her, her children to the Lord. And that those children uh, are in the ministry. And then here's another one that dedicated her children to the Lord. And uh, she didn't make it, but I believe she's in heaven. But um, praise God, the Lord had a plan for those two little boys to have somebody to take them in. And I thought about this. It would be, it'd be a wonderful tradition if we could start this. Maybe we can do it tonight. I'd like to start an offering for mothers every year uh, to adopt. Amen? To adopt. Have an adoption fund around here where we could have some, have some uh, funds in case somebody needs some help. Like we helped the Elrods because I believe that's a great ministry. 
It sure is better than abortion, isn't it? Say amen. I knew I'd get an amen on that one at least, amen. But uh, uh, y'all, y'all pray about that and think about it. I think it would be a wonderful thing to do on Mother's Day is to set up a fund to help people to adopt. Because I'm going to tell you something. There's 300,000 children, I believe. No, it's maybe, yeah, I think it's 300,000 in Georgia that need a home. And uh, so you pray about that, amen. All right, Exodus chapter 20, please. We're going to read the whole chapter. I'm going to preach on it to... Uh, I'm going to take a chance now because Mother's Day, Sunday night, is the worst attended service. Uh, my, my wife don't even come back. No, not really. She does too. And uh, uh, it's the worst attended service there is usually because we've got all the activities. But I'm going to take a chance and do a continuous message. And uh, if not, you're going to miss your Mother's Day meal. So I'm going to do this part one, part two tonight uh, on um, uh, this great subject of guidelines for building a godly home. Guidelines for building a godly home. I think I've misconstrued this a, a, a lot in my ministry that I preach a lot on the Ten Commandments just being a schoolmaster to teach us we can't keep them. You know, we can't, nobody can keep the Ten Commandments. But I want to tell you something, that's not the only reason we have the Ten Commandments. Can you hear me now? Uh, we have the Ten Commandments as guidelines for morality, for society, and for our homes, especially the Fifth Commandment, and that's what I want to preach on today. So let's stand on to the Word of God. And uh, let's read this chapter together, amen? I'll read the first verse, you read the second verse, that way you'll get more interested in it, okay? We'll read responsively. We used to do it in my church all the time when I was a kid, and we'll, we'll try it again. It says, and God spake all these words, saying, class, I am. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. <coughs> Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them is, and rested the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Here's our text. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. And they said to Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. The people stood afar off, and Moses drew near into the thick darkness where God was. You shall not make with me gods of silver, neither shall you make to you gods of gold.
And if thou wilt make me an altar of stone, that thou shalt not build it of huge stone. For if thou lift up thy tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. Amen. Thank you for reading. You may be seated. Father, thank you for this scripture. Thank you for the Ten Commandments. Thank you for the whole law. Thank you for the, for the New Testament, the Old Testament. We all, Lord, need it. And God, we know that the Word of God abideth forever. And Lord, changes not. And Lord, we just pray, dear God, as we take the powerful sword this morning and preach it, that it'll help some homes and help some marriages. God, that it'll help some moms to be even better moms and help some children to honor their parents. And we're going to praise you and thank you for what you do in and through this message. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, we're learning from this chapter, chapter 20, that folks, God has some guidelines. He has some guidelines for godly living. He has guidelines for your home. He has guidelines for your marriage. You know, God thought of this uh, thing called marriage, amen? And it's wonderful, amen? Thank the Lord. And I'm telling you what, friend, uh, he has a plan for your life as you raise children up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And I want to tell you something, it's more important than uh, building a business. It's more important than building a career. It's more important than a, building a nest egg. Uh, uh, is building a God's home. You may become the president of the largest company uh, in, in Dalton, Georgia, or, or in this area with power and influence. But what does it profit a man if he gains all these riches and loses children? Amen. I'd rather fail as a, uh, you know, I'd rather fail as a pastor and succeed as a husband and a father than to succeed as a pastor and fail as a husband or a father. I'm telling you, friend, the Bible says in 3 John chapter, verse 4, there's only one chapter, it says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. One day you're going to understand that when you have children. You'll have no greater heartache if your children go bad, if your children go to the world, go to the devil. You know, a lot of times people get saved, but they're still arm links with the devil. People get saved and they're still in here in distance with the devil. And that's sad that we don't uh, draw a line and, and, and get separated under the Lord. And it's not just being away from the world, but it's being close to God. That's separation. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 6, if you want to turn there, verse 5 and through 7, some tremendous verses on, on your home. They're about to occupy the promised land. And what's the first instructions that um, the Lord gives these people in Deuteronomy chapter 6? i got to back up to verse uh, uh, 1, really. Uh, the Bible says, Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord uh, your God commanded to teach you that ye might do them in the land whether thou goest possess. And here's the bottom line. Verse 2, that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God. I want to tell you something, folks. We live in a day and age where people don't fear God anymore. And that fear means reverence God. That means honor God. Appreciate God and, and realize who He is. And most churches try to bring God down on their level. And most families try to bring God down on manageable terms and, and just say, hey, listen, Lord, I'll call on you when I need you and use Him as emergency rations instead of daily bread. Folks, He's God. And if He's God, He's got a word for you and He's got a commandment for you and He's got a guidebook for you that'll make your family a whole lot better than you can try to make your own. Look at verse 2. And thou mightest fear the Lord thy God and keep all... His statutes and His what? Commandments, which I commanded thee, that thou and thy son and thy son's son all the days of life, that thy days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, O Israel, Deuteronomy 6, 3, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee. Oh, folks, it's a blessing to be in God's will. And that you may increase mightily in the Lord. And listen to this now. It says this, it says, and as the Lord God of thy fathers has promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. One Lord. Listen, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, 
and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. And here it is. And thou shalt teach them what? Diligently unto thy children. And thou shalt talk with them when thou sittest in thy house. And when thou walkest by the way. And when thou liest down. And when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy head. And thou shalt be a frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. And it goes on and talks about how God will bless this nation if only the homes will come back to God. And so, folks, I want to tell you something. Everything rises and falls on leadership. But I want to tell you something, folks. The Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 1, there is a law of mama. Folks, and I believe that the, uh, a godly mama can, can draw the line uh, and, and, and set the standard. And, folks, teach children to fear God. To fear God. I want to tell you something, you can't be with your children all the time, but you can bl believe this, if they fear God, they'll turn out right. And there's riches and honor in life of those that fear God, Proverbs 22, 4, I'll get to that in just a minute. But I want to tell you something, friend, before there's a relationship with each other, there's got to be a relationship with God. If you're not right with your Savior, you're not going to be right with your spouse. If you're not right, hey, listen, friend, listen, if you're not right with, uh, uh, you know, with your father, you're not going to be right with your friend. Folks, there's a, there's a horizontal relationship that's so important, and it's brought out in Exodus chapter 20. Turn back there with me. And we'll see the first uh, four commandments is about God. And folks, I want to tell you something. It's all about God. And if you're right with God, mamas, and if you're right with God, daddies, and if you're right with God, children, you'll be right with each other. And that you have a you'll have a foundation, a, tr a, a true foundation to uh, to worship the living God. Look at the basis for the Ten Commandments in verse one of Exodus twenty. It says, "And God, there's the basis, folks. Listen, God is real, Amen. And let me just say this: God is right, and you can compromise if you want to, and you can look the other way if you want to, and call it, call it just a little." A habit or a little problem, but I want to tell you something. Sin is sin because God writes it in, in His law that thou shalt not. It's not ten suggestions, it's ten commandments. And I believe, folks, that one of the greatest things you can do is teach your children who God is. He's God. He's not just uh, many gods or one of the gods. He is the living God. Then it says, and God spake. Spake. So God is in existence, but God's word is spoken. And God spake. Here's the basis for the Ten Commandments. It's God's. It's God's commandments. And also, God loved you enough to speak those commandments. Amen? And then it says, it says, And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord. And then we have God's name. Wah-yay, it's uh, the I am. He's not the I was. He's the very God. He's, he's God Almighty. Folks, listen, He's the I am. He's not the I was. And I'll just say this, friend. The Ten Commandments is as relevant today as they were when God gave them, gave them to Moses and told him to take them to his people. Amen? And folks, they're outlawed in the courthouse. They're outlawed in the schoolhouse. But folks, I want to tell you something. They ought to be preeminent in your house. It ought to be a, your law. It ought to be your, uh, and I know you can't keep them. And I know that you'll fall short. And it teaches us we're a sinner and that we need the grace of God. But folks, let's don't excuse ourselves with just getting so used to the darkness that we have no absolute uh, standards for our marriage and no absolute standard for our uh, raising our children. Folks, God is God. And God is Lord God. He's the mighty God. And then look at verse 2. It says, I, the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage. Folks, He's our Redeemer. He loves us enough to be our Deliverer as He was the children of Israel. He's our Redeemer. And folks, He's our Revelator. He, he reveals to us His love. He reveals to us how to be saved. He reveals to us His truth. He reveals to us and shows us how to live. Don't argue with God. Just submit. Amen? Folks, listen. How to relate to one another. How to have a happy home. 
a holy home, a happy home. And I want to tell you something. You can just go ahead and do it your way and I'll ask you a question in about 10 years. How you doing? How's it going? How's your children doing? You just leave God out. And you just put God on the shelf. And you don't realize that He is God. And folks, that He's more than a special day. And He's more than just a religion. He is God Almighty. And He has spoken. And so the basis and the foundation for uh, this is He's delivered us. He's redeemed us. He's saved us. And now He wants to nourish us. And He wants to love us. And He wants to build a closer relationship with Him. First four commandments. And folks, He goes on to say, Thou, uh, thou shall have no other gods before me. Because I'm going to tell you why. There's no other God worthy to be before Him. And there is no other God. And some people have the God of money and the God of self and the God of, of prestige and the God of this and the God of that. But I want to tell you something. Those gods will never help you and never save you and never give you love and contentment, folks. But I want to tell you something. He wants you to have a close relationship with Him. And the first four commandments talks about how you ought to look at God, how you ought to love God. And then he said when he went and started his nation, he said, parents, do it diligently, do it faithfully, don't, don't waver and tell them who I am. I am God and to fear me. Greatest thing you can ever do for your children is teach them to fear God. I'm talking about reverence God, say amen. I'm talking about honor God, say amen. I'm talking about, is anybody saying amen or I amen myself? Amen. But anyway, to, 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 to love God in such a way that you respect Him. I say this a thousand times, I'll say it again, and I'll say it to the newlyweds and the oldlyweds. If you want to energize your uh, marriage, bring one word into it. Honor. The Bible says husbands, Know your wife and honor them as the weaker vessel, and you'll be have you'll be great you'll have heirs of the grace of God together, and your prayers will be not hindered. First Peter three verse seven, one of the greatest uh, verses on marriage in the New Testament. Folks, listen: if you honor each other, there is respect and love and appreciation like none other. But you know, folks, we take each other for granted. But I want to tell you something. The horror of all horrors is when you, mama, began to take God for granted. Now, if you take your mother for granted, she's coming looking for you. Amen. I'm telling you, once you take her for granted, she's going to move in with you, praise the Lord. Amen. I hope she does. But I want to tell you something. You take God for granted. He'll let you. But I want to tell you something. You'll be on your own, big buddy. I'm telling you what, you'll be on your own trying to uh, raise those children. Hey, you'll be on your own trying to have a good marriage. Just leave God out. Don't honor Him. Let Him be one of the gods. I mean, just call on Him when you need Him. And folks, I want to tell you something. You'll find out you won't have a holy life and you won't have a happy life because God is God. And He is a redeemer of your soul and He saved your soul. And folks, He brought you out to bring you in. The abundant life, the happy life, the joyful life. Folks, he's not trying to be a killjoy. He's not some Marine sergeant up in heaven trying to take everything away from you and march you in orders. Folks, he wants to bless you. He wants you to think, think uh, that life is worth living and life is happy and holy and, 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 and it's awesome to be a part of God's family, say amen. And mamas, you ought to bring the joy of the Lord to your home, amen. Old Fuddy Dud will come home from work. He won't have much joy. But praise God, you are the thermostat. Amen. I mean, you're the joy of God in your home. Amen. You got God the Father. You got God the Son. And you got God the Holy Spirit. And folks, I want to tell you something. There's the Father. There's the Son. And I want to tell you what. The spirit of the home is a mama. Say amen. I mean, mama, you can turn it all around. Praise God. Or you can be a little sour when he comes home. And fought the kids all day long. And folks, it can be World War III. And you'll just turn it over to Him. Amen? Praise God, walk out the door and forget it. And folks, I want to tell you something. Many families are doing that. Why? They don't have the proper viewpoint of God. Lift Him up. Honor Him. The Ten Commandments honors God. The Ten Commandments are God's word for you to get closer to Him. And as you get closer to Him you get closer to each other. Amen? And folks, listen. The best you can do in the flesh is manipulate. 
Best you can do is get your little old way. But I want to tell you something, the most you can do in the Spirit is minister one to another. See, you can't give out of emptiness. You've got to give out of fullness. That's why, young ladies, you, didn't, you shouldn't date somebody that's not spiritual. I mean, you're looking for uh, somebody that can carry a football across the line. Big deal. What they need to do is carry his Bible to church with your, with your 20 kids you're going to have, or, or four kids, or whatever, amen? When we had twins on my birthday, I, I named them, nicknamed them Stop and No More. No, nope, not really. But uh, <laughs> thank God for children. Thank God you can have children. I thank God for it. But folks, it's a divine trust. And the trust is this, no other gods before him. The divine trust is teach them to fear God. And they'll never be taught to fear God unless you fear God yourself. Don't do this junk where you say, do as I say and don't do as I do. Baloney. What they need is less hypocrisy and more demonstration. Amen? We need to walk the walk and not just talk the talk. This is not a sweet message, is it? But anyway, uh, God wants us to fear Him. God wants us to lift Him up. God wants us to honor Him. And the first four commandments are just so plain and, and so clear. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images, any likeness of anything that is in heaven or above, or that is in earth beneath. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them that serve them. It goes on saying, uh, uh, it says, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Verse 7. Uh, folks, it says, Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Set aside a sanctified day in the Old Testament. Now we have the Lord's day, the resurrection day. We don't keep the Saturday or Sabbath. But folks, then he gets down to after he lifts up his name, lifts up who he is, and, and gives the admonition for you to, uh, to uh, uh, honor Him, here's the great commandment with a promise. And I'll close with this one, continue tonight. It says, Honor thy father and thy mother, and thy days shall be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Right in the middle of lifting up Jesus and lifting up who God is, the Bible admonishes us to honor our father and mother. And the days shall be long. See, God's got a plan. God's got a proper order. God's got an authority. And folks, listen, the, the truth of the matter is, when you honor God and you honor your parents, God blesses you in a very special way. And folks, a word to the children this morning. How, to, how, how should you be honoring uh, to your parents? Well, you know, I think, first of all, honoring your father and your mother, God instructed Moses to instruct the parents to teach them, their children, to honor both father and mother. He said when they went into the promised land, teach them my commandments. And then he went on and emphasized this commandment of honoring. And I believe, I'm afraid that parents start about five feet and about 180 pounds, or maybe six foot and 180 pounds too late. I mean, the time God gives you a child, you ought to teach them to honor your, your, your husband, yourself, and most important of all, your God. That inclines there must be a personal relationship with God. Folks, uh, the practice of the children is, 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 is verse 12. God says, I have a high opinion of parents. I'm going to trust you to teach them to do several things. But one thing is to teach them to honor God, to fear God. Look at Leviticus chapter 19, verse 3. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 3. We'll show you the premium God puts on respect and reverence in the home. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 3. The Bible says, Ye shall fear every man his mother and his father. Ye shall fear every man his mother and his father, and keep my Sabbath. I am the Lord your God. And then he goes into Leviticus chapter 20, verse 9. For everyone that curses his father or mother shall surely be put to death. 
He hath cursed his father or mother, his blood shall be upon him. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 17, the eye that mocks his father and scorns, uh, and scorns obedience to his mother, mother, the ravens of the valley will pick out his eyes and the young eagles will eat them. Now, folks, that's kind of blunt. That's kind of straight. But I think what he's saying is he's making this foundational statement is, folks, to disrespect your parents invites God's judgment. Did you hear me? To disrespect your parents invites God's judgment. How do children honor their parents? Well, first of all, I believe you honor your parents by obeying them. Amen. Come on, Mom, say amen now. Back me up. Colossians 3.20 says this, Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. It's well-pleasing. And if God's pleased, your whole life's going to be a lot better. Folks, God's not kidding here. He's saying you need to honor each other, but you need to start with honoring God. And one way that you prove that you honor God and that you honor each other and you honor your parents is obey them. And then number two, if you can honor your parents when you listen to their counsel. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8 says this, My son, hear the instruction of your father, and do not forsake the law of your mother. Aren't y'all glad you had a mother that laid down the law? <laughs> Say, man, whoo, my mother, she laid down the law. My daddy was drunk most of the time before he got saved. And I will tell you something, I had a mama that would, she, she would not let me stay home. I mean, she had ripped the sheets off of my off of my bed and say, you're going to church. Reminds me of a fellow one time that uh, the lady of the house did that, ripped the sheets off, off of him and said, you're going to church. He said, I ain't going to church. They don't like me there anymore. I'm not going to church. He said, I'm going to give you two reasons you're going to church. Number one, you're 42 years of age. And number two, you're the pastor of the church. Amen. <laughs> Some of y'all ain't smiled yet. I'm going to give up on you. But anyway, <laughs> it's an honor to have a mama or a daddy that sets a standard for God. They're not telling you to go out and live wild. They're not telling you to go out and live for money. They're telling you to live for God. What a blessing. And folks, to honor your parents is to listen to them. To honor your parents is to obey them. But let's put it this way. To honor your God is to listen to Him. How much you go to church? How much you read your Bible? How much do you pray? How much do you listen to preaching during the week? What kind of music do you listen to? You say, it's none of your business. Well, I'm just asking questions. You can answer if you want to. But I want to tell you something, friend. That honors God, your lifestyle, during the week. Amen. And I want to tell you something. Who do you listen to? There's many teachers out there through music and literature and computers and all the information age we live in. But I want to tell you something. You need to listen to God. And you need to listen to His Word. And you don't need to run from His Word when the, de when, the, when, the, when the Lord rebukes your sin. You need to run to the Lord. Amen? Best friend you ever had is a preacher to preach against sin and step on your toes so your toes will walk in correction. Say amen. amen. Oh, no, I want to have it nice and fun and I want everything to go, uh, you know, uh, 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 I want to have it entertaining. Well, folks, God didn't call us to be entertainers. God called us to be interceders for, God, for God's glory, to lift Him high and holy. And to preach and to teach. And mamas, you're one of the greatest preachers that will ever live in your home. Amen. I know we we'll not have lady preachers in the church, but boy, we need to have some lady preachers in the home. Preach it to them. Have home devotions. Praise God, pray for them. You honor your parents when you see, when you, when you, when you see life through God's perspective and you make wise decisions. Amen. Come on. I want to tell you something. The Bible says, my son, Proverbs 27, verse 11, my son, be wise and make my heart glad. I want to tell you something. Nothing will make your mama happier than you to make wise decisions on who you hang around with. Amen? I mean, listen, you're a product of, of uh, 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 who you hang around with and who you read and who you listen to. That's right. Peer pressure will bring you down every time. But there will be some positive peer pressure. Mama, it's law. <laughs> Amen. Mama wants this. Folks, I want to tell you something. It's not that we can't sin. We ought to not want to sin because we grieve the Heavenly Father 
but we grieve our dear mamas. Come on, say amen. I mean, she sacrificed for you. She's done everything she can to provide for you and help you and love you and, 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 and nourish you. And then you go out and shame her name and shame God's name by just living any way you want to. I think it's an insult to a good mama. And folks, listen, the Bible says also, it says you, you honor your parents when you make those good choices. A foolish son is a grief to his father, Proverbs 17, 25. And bitterness to her, her that, bear, that bore him. Bitterness and grief. No greater joy than our children walk in truth, but there's no greater grief than when our children don't. Can somebody say amen? amen? I mean, you can have all the business connections. You can sell all the carpet that Dalton can make. I'm telling you, you can be successful in every way. But if you lose your children, what's it profit? Amen. And I'm going to preach as long as God gives me breath to preach that God will, will honor your family if you first honor Him. Can somebody say amen? amen. Or at least nod your head and come back up. <clears throat> Colossians 3.20 says this, Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord. I want to please God. The Bible says the way to please God is obey your parents. Yeah. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God has given you. Folks, the days may be long. Not long with the repercussions of sin, but long and lasting. Sweet and wholesome, loving and kind. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 20, explains this commandment in verse 12. It says, honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment. Best commentary on the Bible is the Bible. It's the first commandment with promise. It says that it may be well with you, and you may live long on the earth. Here's a promise. You obey your parents, you respect them. Put it down. Disobedient children die young. Rebellious children die young. Because this, my Bible says your life will be long if you obey your parents. Every time I meet somebody over 90, I say, I bet you obeyed your parents. And they all smile. Yes, I did. And I knew, and they'd give me some stories immediately about how their mama took them to the woodshed or their mama uh, disciplined them. Their mama was sweet and kind and prayerful and wholesome and just made them want to serve God. Wet their appetite. D.L. Moody said this, I've lived over 60 years and I have learned one thing if I have learned nothing else. No man or woman who dishonors father or mother ever prospers. You know, Romans chapter 1 talks about the signs of the last days. And then right in the middle of all the list of all the things that uh, the haters of God, the sexually immoral, the, the murderers, uh, the, I mean the people that change unnatural affections, right in the middle of it is disobedient to parents. I mean Romans chapter 1, read it later, verse 1, 28 through 30 has all these lists of these abominable sins. I mean, same-sex marriages and all kinds of homosexuality and lesbian, all, that's, all that abomination to God. And right in the middle of it, right in the middle of it, it says disobedient to parents, unthankful. I'm going to tell you something, friend. Somebody asked a little boy one time what he wanted to be when he grew up, and he said, I just want to be alive. I want to tell you this, you obey your parents, you'll not only be alive, probably, but you'll have life and life more abundant. See, listen, I'm going to tell you something, young people. If you've got a mama that's continuing on your case, she's not trying to ruin your life. She's trying to help your life. She's trying to direct your life. She's trying to help you with the Ten Commandments as guidelines to honor God. And if you honor God, He'll honor you. And then as you honor your mama and your daddy, praise God, your father and your mother, it is a promise 
It is a commandment with promises and it will be well with thee. Ephesians 6 says, and your life shall be long. And folks, I'm gonna tell you something. Some people are living, but they're just existing because sin is ravaging their life, shaming their parents. And folks, their life is short-lived even if they live 90 years because their days are full of turmoil and disappointment and sin and disgrace and heartache. Your little children might give you a headache now when they're little, but they'll grow up and give you a heartache if they don't turn out for God. And folks, I want to tell you what, I want to sum it up and I'll, I'll, I'll preach tonight. You need to teach your children to respect God. You need to teach your children to obey God. And the only way to do that is walk that way first. I want to close with two verses. Proverbs 22, 6. Proverbs 22, 4. You knew I was going to go there. And I purposely did not read it during the flyer presentation as I normally do. Proverbs 22, verse 6. All of you know it. All of you know this verse. But folks, I believe we overlooked the context. In Proverbs 22, 6, it says this. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he'll not depart from it. Now, there is some exceptions called rebellion. But I want to tell you something, friend. What you need to do, Mama, if I could ever give you a gift today, I'm going to give you this gift. God's Word is enough. God's Spirit is enough. God's love will touch your children's heart, and your faithfulness will demonstrate it. But look at Proverbs 22, 4, and I close. It says, By humility and the fear of the Lord, read it closely now, are riches. What are you living for? What's it profit a man if you gain a lot of money and have a lot of houses and you don't have a home? And you pour all that money into education. I believe you ought to get as much as you can. And they're not wise towards God. And it says, by humility, that means you need God. Oh, do you need God. I am alarmed at mothers that don't think they need to come to church or Sunday school anymore. It says, by humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor. And what? Life. Whew. You can live beneath your privilege, children. Shame your parents. Shame your God. Slap your Redeemer in the face and your Deliverer. And say, Lord, thank you for saving me, but I'll just live for the world. Or you can honor your father and your mother. And thus, first of all, preeminent basis for this commandment, honor God. See, the Bible says you tramp a child in the way he's going, he'll... he'll and when he's old, not apart from it, he'll come back. But I'll tell you this, friend, the preeminent foundation for it is that first we walk in humility and first we fear God and then part of the riches and part of the honor and part of the life is our children turn out right. Listen, children, when mama says no and when daddy says no, they really love you. When they spank you, you know what they're teaching you? There is a consequence for sin. Amen? Well, don't do as I do, do as I say. Folks, when they live it and walk it, they're not just doing it for themselves. They're doing it as a pattern for you. And I believe that one of the greatest lessons you could ever learn is that God loves you. And one of the greatest persons I know that demonstrates that God loves you is your mama. Let's pray. Father, thank you this morning for your word. It's straightforward. It's exact. It's your word because you are God. And Lord, thank you that we have the basis for our, the Ten Commandments because it's not man's commandments. It's not some preacher giving a commandment. Or I'd rebel against that probably. But it's God Almighty, Yahweh, the I Am, 
the Son of God, the very God, the only God, saying and telling us what to do to have a life of riches and honor and of life. Lord, I pray that every child here and under the sound of these godly mothers will listen and make wise decisions in their marriage. Make wise decisions in their career and their education and all that they need to do. God will be God-centered, God-directed, and Mama and Daddy approved. Lord, help us. Help us as parents and grandparents to teach our children they are special. That there's a special reason for their life. A purpose. And that purpose is to glorify you and to obey you and to love you with all their heart and all their soul and all their mind. 